Well, thank you very much, and along with everyone else, can I thank the organisers for taking the effort to, to do this. I have to say, I feel a bit like deja vu, which many of you have. I think since about 1986, I've been involved in uh, fora talking about public broadcasting and the quality of the media, the crisis that Peter so rightly points to has been running for a long time now, so long you have to get a new name, I think, Peter, crisis can't last quite that long. <laughs> so so it's, it's been a long running issue, but congratulations to the folks who have pulled this together because I think there's a very timely debate to be had now. I do want to acknowledge one person, Graham Kelly, over here. Mr. Music, really, I think we would say. Graham, thank you very much for what you've done for New Zealand Music. I should also confess, the being Broadcasting Minister, I used to be a media sort of academic as well, and Bill and I did one training workshop, I think, together. We used to do media training, I don't. So it's good to, good to see familiar faces who have been around this debate for a very long time. We've got a short period of time, so there's so much I'd love to say, but let me just say uh, very quickly what I think might help the debate move along. First of all, that de deja vu comment is one which goes to this ongoing debate which we've not resolved. New Zealanders on the whole don't seem to have taken this debate to the point where they want it resolved for a long time. So one of the challenges, I think, is how to popularise this debate over the next little while and make it important. I think one of the key things is that when you look at what's happening around the world at the moment, there is genuine interest in the role of the media in societies like our own. If we take the, the Brexit example, if we take Mr Trump for, for example, what I think has begun to happen is that people are realising that one of the many things that worries them is that trend towards people living in a bubble because mainly commercial media driven by the need to deliver an advertiser's audience to them moves off constantly to find that audience, to seal it off and bring it to the advertiser. So in many cases, we are increasingly now confronted by people who never talk to each other, who never hear about each other, who are not part of some kind of general discussion. They're talking to the people who agree with them. And if we look at what's happened in the US, I think we would agree that's exactly one of the problems that is faced now in the US. People are listening to CNN and to test Fox. They're listening to Fox and to test CNN. So they don't actually listen to each other for very long. Now, the notion that we move into those bubbles, I guess, is at the heart of why you want quality public broadcasting. Because at the heart of public broadcasting is the notion of national identity and of the building of a community. A community of people who may well be diverse and different, but hear about each other who get to know what each other's stories might be, and as a result begin a, to have a process of building a sense that yes, we're different, but we share common values, we understand each other, we know what you're on about. You may well be a Muslim, I may be a Christian, but I understand what you're doing. I'm not un unfamiliar with you, and I can live in the same society, and we can share some things, we can have a national identity, we can be here together. That kind of question of identity and that question of community has unfortunately been left to people like Nigel Farage around the world or the wonderful Boris, for example, who have argued that they're the only people who can talk about these kinds of issues when really people who want to live in a progressive society where people do have that sense of community and tolerance that runs side by side, those people need to take that debate back. And one of the ways of doing that is through public broadcasting. I think one of the ways to popularise this debate at the moment is to get into the mainstream of debate amongst New Zealanders that we do need to live together. We do need a way of doing that, and public broadcasting, wherever it may be, is a way of doing that. Now, when I was broadcasting minister, one of the things that was a problem for us too was it wasn't top of the tree for, for that particular government. It had come out of the 1980s, 1990s. The, the country was not in great shape. The emphasis was on things like balancing the books, getting things going again in terms of regional economies and so on. But we had a very robust approach to what we were doing broadcasting, driven really by two major ideas. First is what we wanted was a strong mixed economy of broadcasting, community broadcasters, commercial broadcasters, public broadcasters. We wanted the whole range, and of course, it wasn't about saying let's just do it while we always did it, because media was changing very quickly, so the idea was to respond to that change as well. And a whole range of things happened from fee view to quotas for New Zealand music to six and seven to money that went into the TVNZ charter to more money for RNZ. It was a very, very 
I think, good time in a government that was trying, its priorities were elsewhere, but trying to respond to the need for a balance, if you like, in that media market. Now, I think from, I was just saying to Bill, I think the only thing that survived in the policy framework from that time was music, Graham. It's fantastic success that we now have so much New Zealand music around the place. Everything else has gone. Charters have gone, six and seven has gone, money's gone, it's all gone. There is a need to bring some of that back and rethink how to do that now. You'll have lots of ideas given to you as you move around the country, but I floated one a little while ago, which I'll just finish with. That's as Oscar Wilde said, just to give you hope, the word finish. Is, is that I, I, what you've got to do, I think, is find an enduring funding model and ownership model for public broadcasting. If you don't have that, it's just so too easy to turn over and, and not have. So it's, it's been on my mind for a while that perhaps the way to do this is to sell television New Zealand. It was worth about 400 million or so, I guess, when, we were, when it was being thought about being sold at the end of last century. You all know it better than me. Right about that, I don't know what it's worth now. Half, the, so, so 200 million, say. If, if, of course, they prepared themselves for sale, they would drive their sale price up just a little. So let's, let's assume there's a couple of hundred to $300 million sitting there. Investors over here are already, already arguing about this, but let's say we do that. The reason I suggest that is we now as public owner television channel, which is a highly successful, you might say, commercial channel. It doesn't have much to do with the public at all. It's not aspiring to do that. It's not being asked to do that. There is no real reason for it to be doing what it's doing at the moment in public ownership. Sell that, create an endowment, a trust if you like, which then can be built, I think particularly on RNZ, into a multimedia platform, which is what public radio, public television, public anything has to be now. It can't just be public television in the old broadcasting sense. It can't be RNZ in the old sense. It's got to be a multimedia platform from social media through to new forms of television, radio, etc. That endowment, Still, I think, would require some input from uh, the, go the government's purse every now and again, but it would give it, A, a massive amount of independence. It would give us an annual amount of money that would allow it to, to be reasonably strong, and it would give it a real sense of being able to get on with doing a very robust and different job. One of the problems for RNZ right now, of course, is it has so little money. I think from memory, its bu budget's been frozen for quite a while now. Some of the room will know that that it's really unable to take on the things it would love to take on. So my suggestion is, we've already had Peter's knocked down by investors, let's try another one, that we have to find money from somewhere if it's going to work. Very hard to see a government coming in at this time saying, let's prioritise hundreds of millions of dollars to put into an ongoing uh, endowment or way of funding a proper public broadcasting way of going about things in the 21st century, so we have to find that money. And one suggestion is to look at maybe saying, Television New Zealand, go on and be a, a commercial station. We will use that revenue to establish an endowment under a trust that would then build on the platform of RNZ to expand out to be a platform across all forms of media that even Peter Griffin would be happy with. That's my suggestion. Oh, if it was $250 million, you're probably generating around about $25 million a year that it could use to go in there. Yeah, so 10% is pretty high. Uh, I'll take your word, you're the investor. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. but um, you can't guarantee it. Um, but you also need to put money back in the tin because mm. you've got a over inflation yeah, yeah. and growth. Yeah. It's yeah. generally maybe 5% more time. Yeah. What does, 12, what does $10 million get you? That's, that's why I'm suggesting that although that you would form a fund, let's, let's assume, be, be very optimistic and say it's 250 million, something like that in there. That's kind of a nice symbolic sum though, isn't it? To say we're serious about this, it's gone into endowment, there is a trust, they are generating some capital for public radio each year. It's also why I said I cannot see a way forward off that fund alone without there being an annual allocation from the public purse. There'd still need to be somebody argue in Cabinet to say we need to allocate some money towards this. But it would give that sense that we are serious about this, they have their independent money, they are investing it, they are trying to do wise things with it and then invest into public radio. But no, it wouldn't pay the whole lot. If, it, if we had sold it back at the turn of the century and got 400 plus, maybe slightly different territory, but yeah, a little harder now. How much money do we earn from a TV TV show? Don't. 12 mil? 12 mil? There you go. Mm -hmm. 
maybe we put that into public radio, could do. But the, one of the questions I would, I would put in there, though, is owning a commercial television station doesn't make a lot of sense in, in this environment, whereas the emphasis could then go into the notion of, well, what do we do with public broadcasting, which needs to be rethought very radically and not taken off into a discussion about what's the dividend I'm getting from television New Zealand at all the time, which is what preoccupies you a lot as a broadcasting minister, because you know investing and I know what it's been like to be on the other side. Your public broadcasting have access to New yeah, I think, I think one of the questions would be, New Zealand on air, of course, was Jonathan Hunt's um, fallback position when the whole Royal Commission suggested basically just get rid of everything public. So the argument that Graham will remember very well was, well, how do you actually defend New Zealand broadcasting? Because perhaps there'll be none if you do this, no incentive to do it in those days. So Jonathan's argument was, well, let's get New Zealand on air. Yeah, I think so. I think there's still room for saying that this, this uh, could go to that place for New Zealand programming, but a public broadcaster isn't just about New Zealand programming, is it? No, it's not. What I'm saying was, would 100% of that New Zealand on air really go to it? No. The question is, would you put New Zealand on air with 100% going towards uh, public? No, because, the, the, as I say, the logic was how do you get New Zealand programming on air? So someone, in fact, I'm a big fan of something that Bill mentioned before. I don't know why writing journalism, writing journalism, is not um, in New Zealand On Air as well, because we still need good investigative journalism. I, thought, I think the New Zealand On Air fund for New Zealand programming or New Zealand media in general would be open still to people who come from all forms of media. Yeah. Um, Steve, can I ask you, um, how do you think this is politically uh, sustainable? Because it's not even national It's, a, it's as feasible as almost every other model you come up with. The question was, how feasible is it to, to expect that a government will sell television New Zealand, because now, of course, selling anything has become very difficult, not much left to sell as well. Um, that, so would it be acceptable to anybody? It will be as acceptable as anything else, frankly, because the point that broadcasting media is not at the top of the policy tree will mean that almost anything will be taken away. Why will we bother annoying people by doing that? comes back to the central question, how do you drive public interest in public forms of quality media to a high enough point where governments are starting to look for an option? If it's not high on the tree, no, these are all too controversial. Peter's suggestion simply wouldn't work for exactly the reason the investors um, have raised, because it would cause controversy straight away. This wouldn't work because of the difficulty of selling an asset. But if a government is confronted with the idea that people do want to see national identity and community, they see a role for media as being a political priority, then the government's going to have to go and find some money. And finding money just by allocating it, by saying, oh, well, we'll find some money around the cabinet table here, is not going to be easy because health, education, transport, everything else is going to be a very high priority. Got to look for very innovative ways of doing this. So first of all, get the issue up, get the government of the day interested, and they're going to have to start looking for some money. That's the way around it would be, I think, Mark. Thank you. Pleasure.